Hi guys, how are you today? And welcome to Boxing with TC. Now, I'm so sorry that I've been hiatus into my view. Um, thank you, and thank you, and thank you, and thank you. And to anyone else, thank you for coming through and showing your courtesy love, okay? Now, I was enjoying my vacation. I was spending time at home. Um, from work and then my birthday popped up and then Jack Slack and had no background. Let's jump into it. <laughs> so John Jack Slack was born in 1721. Okay, he's born in 1721 in Thorpe, Norfolk, England. He runs a successful business which is butchering. He fights three men in 1743, and unfortunately, there's no information about this match, okay? I don't know who won. I don't know who lost. It just said that he fought three men, and that's it. In 1744, he defeats Daniel Smith. Daniel Smith is a respected, known person, and everybody likes him. Um, and he is a feared man in the Eastern countries, okay? So when... It comes down to Jack's like John uh Daniel Smith is like I will take his um behind on too and I will beat him too. But uh uh it ain't happen that way, okay? John Jack Slack Jr. done beat that Daniel Smith all up in his middle, bust him all upside his head, okay? And he wins. So Jack Don Daniel Smith gone sat down somewhere, okay? And 1748, he decides, you know what, I'm gonna take this a little bit more serious. Bro, here's the business, okay? Not telling if that's what he really said, but that's just imagine that. I just imagine that's how it was said, okay? I'm going to go box. You run the company, and I'll see you when I see you, okay? And that's just what happens because he decides that he's going to move to Bristol, London. Now, why does Bristol, London sound familiar? Bristol Linda sounds familiar because if y'all went to the previous video, y'all will know that that was... Mr. John uh Broughton uh atmosphere. <laughs> Messy or no. So in that same year he defeats Ned Hutt on October the twelfth. Okay. Now remember once again that it was a rumor stated that he was James Fig's son, grandson. It's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, at this time now, he's 29 years old and he is five, eight and a half. And Jack Broughton is 17, 49, is, is, is 49 years old. Okay. And he defeats Jack in 1750. Okay. And the, it was said that he became successful. And the night walkers flocked to him, but they didn't flock to him because of his charisma or his charm or because they wanted to be his chick. The night walkers walked up to him because they knew that he had some coins to give up to him if they gave up the tutu. Yeah, so whatever he left, though, he left an impression. He just wasn't light, okay? He was not light because of... Him just being a dirty player, okay? He was the Rick Flair of the Rick Flair. He was Rick Flair before Rick Flair was Rick Flair because he was known to be a dirty player, which I do believe this is true because of the small fact of, in a Jack Broughton video, I stated to you that he socked him, sucker punched him in his eye. And when he punched him in his eye, he continued on to punching him in his eye. He never stopped. So, you know but the damage that you could cause even if you punch somebody in their nose. Okay? So you being a bare knuckle boxer, I'm pretty sure that you knew exactly what you was doing. You tried to you tried to end that man's career, which you did. Like <sighs> That's why nobody ain't like his ass. Because he was in dirty. <laughs> Cause he was a dirty fighter, y'all. And on top of that, not only was he just a dirty fighter, honey, no. It gets a little bit more, um, me, me, me vibe. He did it for the money. He didn't do it the way his granddad, he didn't do it while his granddaddy did it. Or continue doing to build that foundation, that foundation. No, he had his butchering, his butchering business and he was good with his butchering business. So 
if it don't work out, it don't work out. If it do, it do. I just want to see if I get some extra coins and the people they knew, okay? Um, in that same year of 1750, he defeats George Taylor. No, George Taylor defeats Slack, okay? And this is because of the Bruton Rules, which is the reason why they had, they fallen, they, they fought the way that they did. Um, it was stated that George Taylor actually fought um, Jack Slack and Jack Slack slipped on something and he wasn't able to get up within that within that 30 second peak. So Jack felt as though if it wasn't because of these broken rules, I would still be champion. And now I have to seek my my revenge on Jack Broughton. And, and that's just what he did. He he ended his career. It's blank, blank, period. Um, in 1751, he defeats Monster Petit. And Monster Petit loses due to Pepper being thrown in his eyes. Okay? And when the Pepper is thrown in his eyes, uh, his eyes start budging out. Yeah. It, his eyes start budging out and of course he can't fight so Jack wins once again in 1754 he challenges a Frenchman by the name of Petit and uh, by him challenging this man makes him the first international heavyweight okay and the match is managed by Prince William and Duke of Cumberland. Now, why does Duke Cumberland sound familiar? Because he was uh, Jack Broughton's manager as well. Before Jack Broughton lost to Jack Slack. Okay? <laughs> this is messy. I mean, this is... Well, I guess he was in his town, so... Um, shit, I got your manager too. What the hell? I don't know. Hope he ain't getting his wife and his kids. So the match is announced in the papers, and this is why they say he became a celebrity. He he became successful because they was now promoting his matches um, on the radio, and it was also being promoted. It was also being promoted on the newspaper as well. Okay, and um, the match is announced in the papers, and the match lasts for twenty minutes, and Jack changed colors. Um, due to, uh, uh, due to him being choked. They said, the source, the scoop mom said that he changed, he, he changed, he, 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 I can't even, see, that's how I know this, I they don't even, my, they don't write, it don't speak right with my spirit, y'all, okay? Saying the shit that they said, it just don't seem right, Okay? I'm trying to get it out, but my spirit won't let me all. Sorry. The source that I read said that he changed his color and his color was black. Um no, they're not light skinned. They're not brown skinned. They're not African American. Um they don't have our skin. So I don't know how you change it. But um, ten minutes later, Slack be be being a direct flair that he is, um, he gets the upper hand and he defeats him. Probably you know. <laughs> in seventeen fifty five, Cornelius Harrison. Cor I'm sorry, Cornelius. Cornelius. So you get it together, Cornelius Harrison, A.K.A. King Cole. Um. The fights Jack Slack, okay? He goes to Bristol with the booth match. And the booth match, I spoke to y'all about that in the first video. <coughs> the booth match is set and it is known to be a struggle versus struggle. And a strength versus strength, okay? And uh, the champ friends is like, bro, don't take this guy, okay? Uh, leave, him with, uh, leave him where he at. Don't, don't fight him. And Jack is like, no, I'm going to fight him. And his friends is like, dude, don't do it. You know, leave him where he at. Leave him alone. But Jack fights a brutal match to where they literally tried to rip each other apart. Okay? Jack struck Cole in the eye. <laughs> and it was stated that the devil 
fell like an ox. Okay, so even the devil could be defeated. Message, okay. So they said that. Okay, so wait, let me tell you why they call him the devil. Okay, he was very dangerous, and he was another dirty fighter. Okay, <coughs> it's alleged that he murdered a female amongst the side of a male. It was stated that he was dating um he was dating this young lady or he took on a date, something like that. And he went to the tub or whatever the wherever the how he lived at. Uh and he he came to the house and I guess he must have seen her with old boy sleep and And then it says that he would take his uh, opponents that he would fight into a pit of a park. Like, try to lull them into like a dark, dark area to where uh, they was probably like helpless. And he literally tried to off their heads. Like, he would try to kill them. So, that's why he had that name, okay? Um, once Cole was struck in the eye, though, Jack left. <laughs> Jack got out of Dodge. But he was seething love. Okay. King Cole was not off none of that. He he went on a rampage for him. He didn't find Jack honey. Jack was already gone. That five eight frame, two hundred pounds. He was he was smoking dust. I mean no, yeah, I'm gone. Okay. So in seventeen fifty nine he goes on and beats Jack Moore. Mo Motrin, okay? In 1760, though, honey, all this was going to get shut down because now there's a new sheriff in town and his name was William Stephen. And William Stephen, he wasn't nobody to play with, okay? William Stephen was known to have good hands. Not good hands, I'm sorry, but great hands. And he was also known as a powerful boxer, okay? And it looks like to me he does his homework, okay? Now, he is ranked at number two. At number two, at number two, and a boxing. Yeah, and big knuckle boxing. Yeah, come play with Mr. Steven if you want to. And hit him and can't the F fight. Hmm. You're going to be upset. And um, he was he gets all his opponents, his peers respect. Everybody loves him. And he is expected to win against his peers, you know, amongst his peers. And he got his respect after the first match. But the funny thing about Mr. Williams, Pat, Mr. Williams story is, is that he was actually a nail developer, which I'm guessing that he made nails or help. I don't fucking know. But he was a, a nail developer. And um, a young lady, I don't know if they was kicking it or what, but I guess she was watching the way that he made the nails and noticed that he had a little power to him. And she's like, yeah, let's, you should try being up with boxing. And he's like, yeah, no, I don't really want to do that. And then she talked him into it and he was like, you know what, all right, I'll try it out. And um, in 1760, the challenge was issued. For Jack for a hundred dollars, and now uh, by this time he's been fighting for ten years, and he's kept the belt for ten years. He had it on lock. Once again, though, nobody liked him or respected him, and he was dirty player all around. So, um, nobody wanted to fight him. It it his not fighting wasn't because of he was a threat. His not fighting was because nobody just didn't like him. Nobody respected him enough to even get in a ring with him. But then um, he decided to dibble dab in managing, okay? And I don't know if I said it already earlier, but once again, this is where the dirty side come out him at because he will fix the matches for his guys, because I didn't tell you guys earlier, but he also had a school. It's like everybody had a school going on. But he had a school, and the people that went to his school was his guys. So he made sure that his guys would win, okay? And once again, it wasn't for the love. It was for the greed and the money. 
So he starts fighting in 1722, okay? And when he starts fighting in 1722, um, he now he now has another opponent on his hand from his hometown, Norfolk Throat. And his name is Thomas Agar, which is also the butcher. He's the butcher of Norfolk. The match lasts for seven minutes. No one is injured or damaged. Slack disappears into the crowd. This tells me that Slack didn't have it no more. This match right here in 1722 tells me he doesn't have it anymore. Um, because the old Slack would have found a way to defeat Mr. Thomas. So it, it's just... Even if it was dirty, I, I just believe that he just didn't have it no more. He was probably washed up or he probably was just chilling a little bit too much. So, um, the Duke of New York now bets $500 on Slack to $100 on Stevens. And, um, during this match, it is a KO to the Jess and Jack Flaws getting, um, getting on the floor and attack Steven, okay? And he hits Steven in the rib. Okay, that sounds more like Jack Slack. Hits him in the rib. The punch does absolutely nothing to him. It doesn't affect him at all. At this point, Slack is delivering shots that Stevens is eating. <laughs> He's it's not phased by his hits. His fits, his hits no longer matter. They it just it's doing nothing at this point. And um Jack is giving him everything he got. And his giving it, it ain't good enough. <laughs> so after playing with him, he decides I am going to toy with Mr. Jack Slack. And he punches Slack dead in the head. Boop. And bends his arm back. And then puts his leg. I'm trying to think how to explain this. He he puts his leg. Um, I don't know if you guys remember the chicken. If you watch wrestling, you know exactly what the chicken is. He, he has his arms like this, and he has his leg inside out. You can even say this sharpshooter for my wrestling fans. He basically puts him in a sharpshooter, but he has his arms bent back, okay? And then after he drops, he bashes his head to, a, to, to the ground, to the, to the wood that's inside of the ring, okay? And his team, Slack's team, is trying to get him out of there. They're trying to help him. But, no. Miss Stevens is a little bit too strong. And they can't get him off of him. So, um, Slack is now laying in the chest of two surgeons. And, um, that was the end of his career. Okay. So, um, that was his end, at the end of his, his, his in-ring boxing, but that wasn't the ring, the end of his managing boxing, okay? So, you know, we know what he did to Jack, so, Stevens, watch it, cause he coming for you next, cause don't nobody, don't nobody disrespect Jack Slack, okay? Now, he decides to get one of his prodigies and put a price on his head. Now, if y'all think about it, he did this to Jack Broughton as well. He put a price on Jack Broughton's head. And because he was so feared and so respected, nobody wanted to fight Jack Broughton. So he turns around and does this years later to Mr. Steven. And um, he puts $200 on his head for, for 50 And Slack Man won, but... Steven gets even on both their behinds, but he also jacks up his career as well. So what Jack, what Steven does is 
he says subject man, okay? This man um, ends the connections that Jack Slack has with prize fighting, okay? So he wasn't just bare knuckle fighting. He was also prize fighting as well, which means that he was on a... People came to see him like they came to see James Fig. I'm just going to say that, trying to be nice, okay? But people came to see him, okay? So if you end uh, the connection of prize fighting, that means you end, you lose your connections with the Duke. You lose your business with anybody that's associated in that area right there. So you're done. <laughs> you're done. He still kept his prodigy out, okay? He... um. He still had his school, but if you went to his school, you was done too. Because he's done. So, why go to his school if y'all know that he can't? Then he ain't it no more. Steven's career ended because they found out later on that he was paid to lose. Yes, guys. He took the bribe. And the bribe was if he, if he lose or if he won... He would be paid. And that messed him up bad because bare knuckle boxing was a respected, still is a respected sport. Um, it wasn't based off money. It was based off of can they box? Can they can they give the audience the, the audience what they wanted? You understand what I'm saying? It was they was putting on a show, but um, it also, it, it, I feel like it gave people a piece of freedom to just go and watch two angry men destroy yourself. It gave them a little weight off they showed up from their everyday event that they was dealing with. It's not like now in 1720s, 1770s, you couldn't just get up if you had a problem and go get help. If you had a problem in the 1700s, you had to figure out that problem. You know what I'm saying? You would pray. I'm pretty sure they prayed to, you know, the higher power. So you would pray and you would, you know, hope for the best and do what you had to do on your term for it to work out. Or, you know, for the people that just prayed and did nothing, that's what not. But if you was doing what you were supposed to have did, then you just really prayed and hoped for the best and did what you had to do. And it, to know that your match is being fixed, it's like a slap to the fans' face. You know what I'm saying? Like, they spend their hard-earned money to get, you know, seats to this match. And you was a, my, my guy. So, for us to find out that you was, this is being paid for, it's like, the disrespect. <laughs> the disrespect. Um, so, in 1769, Stephen fought two more times. In uh, 1769, he fought in a guy named McGuire. And then in 1788, he fought a guy named Swellings. And because of this scandal, everything was shut down. Okay, boxing went on, bare knuckle boxing left. It left for a long time. It was not, it was not it. It was definitely not it. To the point, they, they shut it down. Illegally didn't matter. Because the illegal people that was running it shut it down too. So, it wasn't no bare knuckle boxing. Uh... The nights that you needed somebody, that you wanted to watch somebody get beat up, ma'am, sir, it's not happening. It's over with. You'll be shut it down. This was illegal and legally. They shut it down because of the Jack Slack thing. Yeah. So, Jack Slack returned back to Pusher and Honey. And in 17, I believe 1789 is where he passed away at in Linden. And um, he continued to butcher after this madness that he created. And so he died. Um, but yeah, after this madness right here, 
uh, um, the um, bare knuckle boxing was all hot, hard. Okay, you could not bare knuckle box. You couldn't do it. Like I said, illegal, illegal. So, my guys, my ladies, this is the short story of the career of the Rick Flair of Ben Knuckle Boxing, Mr. Jack John Jr. Have a good one. Stay you, stay humble, and I'll talk to you later. Enjoy. Good night.